mercy on our souls. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers of the shayhatins. Oh Lord, have mercy, have on, mercy our souls. on our souls. Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls. Have mercy on our souls. Stay away, stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers. Oh Lord, oh Lord, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us all. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على من بعث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of Soul Reflections I'm your host Abu Abd Salam in the last episode we started talking about one of the diseases of the heart or diseases of the soul and that is called anger al ghadab and we talked about how anger in and of itself is not something blameworthy or something praiseworthy. Anger, when it comes to humans, is actually an emotion. As for punching and swearing and all of these things, these are consequences of anger. But they're not anger itself. Anger itself is the emotion that one feels. And everybody knows when they are angry. What is impermissible? What is unlawful in Islam is not that we have to remove that emotion. What is unlawful is to control the consequences of that emotion. Control the consequences, the results of that anger. So it's possible for a person to get angry. And different people have different thresholds. We talked about how there are two main reasons why people get angry. There are internal causes and there are external causes. As for internal causes, they are basically the fact that a person has been created in a particular way. Allah has given different human beings different types of weaknesses, we should say. Everybody has different types of strengths and different types of weaknesses. Maybe one person has the problem of anger, but he doesn't have a problem of being stingy or miserly. Somebody else might get stingy. He is stingy. He has that problem, but he doesn't have the problem of anger. So these are the internal causes. The fact that Allah has created some people with a low threshold of tolerance. They get angry quickly. External causes are to do with a person's environment. Maybe a person hangs around with people who look at this short fuse or short temper and they give it good names like bravery or courage or things like that. And therefore a person hanging around with such people, he begins to take upon himself their characteristics. So internal and external causes of anger. As for the effects of anger, well, there are different types of effects of anger, consequences of anger. Firstly, there are general effects of anger. General things like upon his character changing or his color changing, in his speech, in his movements, you can see differences. Maybe he has clenched fists like this, or perhaps he had red or bloodshot eyes, for example. It's important to understand that the external ugliness that a person has when he's angry, if you compare a person, the way he looks when he's angry and the way he looks when he's smiling, there's a huge difference. When he's angry, often a person looks ugly. But when a person is smiling and he's speaking in good and gentle ways, then very often his appearance is more beautified. So this external ugliness is just a manifestation of the excessive anger in and of itself or inside the person. And in fact, this external appearance is a mere reflection of the internal condition. So these are general effects of anger. There are also effects on the tongue, on the limbs and on the heart. As for the tongue, then a person might swear or he might curse or he might use obscene language language that he would normally himself consider to be unacceptable but on this occasion he's lost his temper and because of that he has resorted to such obscene language as for anger or the effects of anger on one's limbs 
then this is manifest in his wanting to tear things up or beat, hurt, wound the person whom he is angry with. And if he's unable to do that, maybe he wants to even kill the person, depending on how excessive that anger is. So all of these are effects on the limbs. If he's unable to punch the person or harm the person, then maybe he will punch the air, clench his fist, stamp the ground. All of these are effects of his anger, because he hasn't controlled his anger. As for effects of the anger on one's heart, this could include jealousy, hatred, malice, rancor, and so on and so forth. So you can see some of the effects of anger, they're not good and they don't manifest themselves in a good way. So how do we manage this anger? How do we cure ourselves of this problem? And how do we prevent this problem? There are a number of different ways which we can use in order to cure ourselves from this disease of excessive anger. Number one, the first cure is remembrance of Allah, reflecting over Allah's names and His attributes. When a person does this, he will develop a fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will cause him to be mindful of Allah and to be God conscious and therefore be conscious and mindful about his actions, about his statements, about the way he feels towards others. Because he knows that Allah sees him. He knows that Allah hears him. He knows that Allah knows whether this person is having hatred in his heart or whether he has excessive anger, whether he is suffering from jealousy, malice, rancor, all of these other diseases just simply because of his excessive anger in the first place. So Allah knows all of these things. So when a person is mindful of that, this will cause him to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيت. Remember your Lord when you forget. And Ikrimah, one of the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. He was a great tabi'i and a great scholar of tafsir. He said, إِذَا نَسِيت, here in Surah Kaf, it means when you get angry. In other words, Remember Allah when you get angry. When you forget, when you get angry. That's what it means. So the first thing is general remembrance of Allah. As soon as you get angry, immediately think to yourself, Allah is watching what I'm about to do. Allah is listening to what I'm about to say. Allah knows what's in my heart. The second cure for anger or for excessive anger is to get acquainted with the virtues of forgiveness, with the virtues of forbearance, with the virtues of endurance, with the virtues of restraining one's anger within oneself. Once, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said that a man upon being permitted to enter upon Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya ibn al-Khattab, O oh, the son of al-Khattab, Wallahi, you do not give us much from the public treasury. He was the Khalifa at the time. Nor do you judge between us with justice. So Umar radiallahu anhu got angry because he knew this is not true. This is a slander. So he was about to punish the man. But Al-Hur ibn Qais, he said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, O leader of the faithful, O Amir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hold to forgiveness, command with what is right and turn away from the ignorant. Turn away from the ignorant people. And this man is from among the ignorant people. So therefore Umar radiallahu anhu, he immediately remembered Allah. He saw that if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was ordered to do this, and he was the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa then it is worthy that Umar radiallahu anhu also follows in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So when a person takes this counsel and restrains his anger in such circumstances. When a person does this and he knows the rewards of suppressing the anger, then this will stop him from trying to take revenge. So this is the second way, getting acquainted with the virtues of forgiveness, forbearance, endurance and restraining anger. The third way 
to cure yourself of this disease of excessive anger is to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment. A person should realize that Allah's punishment is far greater than any punishment that he can afflict on somebody else. So he might be able to get revenge on his opponent because of his anger. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may get a greater revenge on you. Why? As we saw in the last episode, the way you treat others, Allah treats you. Think about your own weaknesses. Think about the day that you have to stand in front of Allah. Somebody may have wronged you and he may have done something to get you angry. But now you're about to punch him. Now you're about to harm him, abuse him with your tongue. Now you're about to do something else. Think about it. Is that something that you want Allah to do to you when you wrong yourself by sinning? When you sin against Allah and disobey Allah? Do you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get angry with you also? No. So as we heard in the last episode, the man, he asked the Prophet ﷺ, how can I stop Allah's anger against me? What did he say? How can I save myself from Allah's anger? What did the Prophet ﷺ say? He said, you also don't get angry. You don't get angry. So if you don't get angry with the other person, excessive anger, that is, with your consequences not being bad, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it's your turn, Allah may forgive you. You forgive somebody else, Allah may forgive you. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ar-Rahimuna yarhamuhumur Rahman. The most merciful shows mercy to those who show mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows mercy to people who show mercy to others. Allah treats you the way you treat others. So we should realize that on the day of judgment, we're going to be in need of Allah's mercy. So we should show mercy to Allah's creation now, so that Allah will show mercy to us. Let me explain one thing. A person who truly understands the nature of the hellfire will never wish the hellfire for anybody else. Even a kafir, even a disbeliever, a person who truly understands the nature of the hellfire. Let me put something in your mind for a second. Think about the worst person that you know. Somebody at work or somebody at college with you or university or a friend that used to be a friend but harmed you. Let me ask you, would you want that person to go in a fire in this world? Imagine a tandoor, an oven. Imagine an oven where bread is cooked. Would you want that person to go in that oven just for even half an hour? You wouldn't want that. So imagine the hellfire. That is much greater in the sight. That is much, much greater. That is much greater. So if you don't want the fire of this world to touch that person, why would you want the fire of the hereafter to touch the same person? So forgive and forget. And don't display excessive anger on these people. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ After the break, we'll continue with this. Hold that thought. As-salamu alaykum. Say he is Allah one and only. Allah, the absolute and eternal. He begets not, nor is he begotten. There is nothing like him. Focus on the source of wisdom. The Quran is a magnet. And the Sunnah is a revelation. Islam had the solution right from the beginning. We apply that and the problem is solved. Focus on the solution for our world. There is no man on the face of earth. His life was narrated to us like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Poor, rich, white, black, Arab, non-Arab. Everybody say the same word. Obey Allah, obey the messenger. Focus on the Akhirah. Tawbah is mandatory upon each and every Muslim. Success for the Muslim is having the correct belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has power over all things. Has power over all things. Focus on the facts and realities that motivate the world towards Islam in Islam in Focus.
नेक्स्ट ऑन पीस टीवी Before the break we were talking about the ways by which we can manage our anger by dealing with the causes or the consequences of anger to make sure that when we do get angry we control how we react and we don't react in an excessive way number 6 we should question that which entices our rage and our rage to pursue that revenge so if we are afraid that we have been humiliated by someone else then think about the day of judgment if we respond in a bad manner then how will we be on the day of judgment how much humiliation we may be in may Allah protect us from that so when we are about to display negative consequences of anger then we need to sit back and remember the day of judgment and think about you know look at the consequences why is it are we going to sacrifice our standing with allah just to you know get our standing with the people no we shouldn't want to do that rather we shouldn't care what people think of us somebody insults us and we feel insulted how dare you insult us in front of the people okay we may have been humiliated and we can get revenge and hit the person you know harm that person but on the day of judgment do we really want to sacrifice our standing our station with allah and get humiliated by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no so this should be a reason also to stop ourselves from reacting badly in the face of anger number 7 we should remind ourselves of allah's decree allah has decreed everything what that person did may be bad but now that it's done we should realize this was a test from allah and allah jalla wa ala has decreed it so we should remember that this is allah whose decree we are either happy with or unhappy with so we should try and be happy with allah's decree even if it's something that we don't initially like we should realize that there is some good in it if i restrain my anger then my sins will be forgiven insha allah and i will be raised in rank on the day of judgment maybe because of this allah says in the quran innal hasanati yudhibna as-sayi'at good deeds wipe out bad deeds maybe because of this good deed because it was so difficult for me to restrain my anger maybe because of this some of my sins have been forgiven so we should remind ourselves that this is of allah's decree allah's already decreed it it would have happened anyway that's not an excuse or a justification but it's for you to understand that doesn't mean that you know we can do what we want and then tell somebody else oh that was allah's decree we hit someone and we say oh brother this is from the qadar of allah allah decreed this no this is not allowed because then that person could hit us back and say that is also from allah no we use allah's qadar or predestination just to simply understand what's already happened we don't try and justify our deeds by that so we should say that okay what happen to us that is by allah's qadar what we do back that is also by allah's qadar but we don't use that as justification we just simply try to understand actions that have been done using allah's qadar number 8 reflecting on the consequences of giving vent to excessive anger which inevitably results in regret and remorse Imagine somebody says something to you maybe your wife or your husband says something to you or does something that gets you angry then you respond with 10 different responses how are you going to feel tomorrow about it and are you going to have to apologize so a wise person is the one who doesn't even need to apologize he doesn't put him into a situation where he's going to apologize so if you control your anger now then tomorrow you don't have to apologize but if you don't control your anger then tomorrow you're going to have to feel lowly and you're going to have to apologize for what you did yesterday so this is very important point this should stop a person from doing excessive things or bad things based on his anger number 9 he should appreciate that people avoid other people who have short tempers 
If a person doesn't control his anger, then eventually he loses his friends. He finds himself alone. Everybody knows somebody who has a short fuse. They have a short temper. And other people avoid that person. When the phone rings, they look at the number, you know, and they see the person's name, they don't want to speak. Why? Because it's going to lead to an argument. So they avoid such people. And eventually the person is friendless. So we don't want to be people who have a short temper and therefore people avoid us. So this is another means of reminding ourselves of the consequences of anger and this will inshallah help us stop our bad consequences of anger. These are knowledge based things, reminder things. Next few things are about practical things that we can do to stop our excessive anger. Number 10 is to seek refuge in Allah. The Prophet ﷺ told us to do this. And that means that we should say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ But be careful brothers and sisters. If somebody says something to you, don't point at him and say, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Because that will make him even more angry. But you say inside yourselves, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ I don't want to be taken up by shaitan. Remember that shaitan is the one leading you to do bad things. So try and avoid that in the first place. So seek refuge with your tongue. This will immediately remind you that shaitan is the one who is getting you to do the bad consequences of anger. Number 11, change your physical state. Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, when one of you becomes angry while standing, he should sit down. If the anger leaves him well and good, otherwise he should lie down. So if he is standing, then he should sit down. If he's sitting down and he's still angry, then he should lie down. Right? What do we do? We do the complete opposite. Somebody comes to us, gets angry with us, and we're sitting down. Instead, and we, he does something bad to us, what do we do? We get up. Instead, we're supposed to sit down. We're supposed to lie down. You're supposed to show the other person that, look, I'm not there for a fight. I'm not going to argue and swear at you and all of this. This will in turn calm down the other person. But if you stand up, then that person will also stand up and it will become confrontational. So the Prophet ﷺ tells us to change state. Go from standing to sitting. Go from sitting to lying down. It's a practical way of removing some of the bad consequences of anger. Number 12. We should increase in dua. Again, something very practical. Dua to Allah. Oh Allah, remove this disease. Oh Allah, remove this vice. Allah is the only one who is able to control you. Allah is the only one. And therefore, Allah is your creator. And beg your creator. Beg Allah. Oh Allah, make this easy for me to control this anger. So when you do this, Allah will listen to you eventually, insha'Allah ta'ala. And number 13, make wudu. If a person is suffering from excessive anger, let him go away and make wudu because this calms the person and the shaitan goes away when you are doing wudu. So this is with regards to anger. Anger could be something bad, but it can also be something good. As we started our topic on anger with, it could be something good. We must get angry when we see some of the violations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being broken. So for example, the Prophet ﷺ would only get angry when he saw someone disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When one of Allah's rights were being violated. So it's important that we should be careful that we get angry when Allah's violations happen. But... We have to control that. And this should lead us to stop that evil, either with our tongues by giving advice, or with our hands, or at least hate it in our hearts. We must hate it in our hearts. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever among you sees something evil, let him stop it with his hand. If he can't, then with his tongue. If he can't, then with his heart. Hate it in his heart. And that is the weakest form of iman. So we must get angry in order to hate that. But that shouldn't lead us to negative actions. And by this we finish the topic on anger. And in the next episode we'll look at another disease that we can control by looking at the cures.
وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the shayatins Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the shayatins Oh Lord